Ah, when well, here we go. Time for another live stream with Incarnate. Hey, everybody, how's it going? We're making sewers today. Yeah, get your mind out of the gutter. Yes, yes, this stream will likely, will likely get a little down and dirty. You know what's going to be in the gutter, right? It's a sewer stream. What do you expect? Not child appropriate stream? Hey? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome, King Clown. Awesome. Oh, yeah, we're going to be doing sewers. Good noon time from Oklahoma. Welcome, Seraphim. Awesome. Seeing some faces. Hey, so just so you know, Philip is going to be modding this stream today. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask Philip. And I'll try to answer any questions that I can. So those of you who just walked in, we're doing sewer maps. We're getting down and dirty. Our brains are going to be in the gutter. I'm going to let some people kind of file in. Just a couple more people. And then we'll get started. Woo, woo. Time to get slimy. Yes. I like it. <laughs> it's going to about to get gross. So this stream is going to be in the fantasy battle map style. I'm just going to jump right in. I don't have any announcements right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new map immediately. We're going to go with fantasy battle map. I'm going to choose this high 3K, which is right in between the medium and the ultra. So that way we still have some nice resolution. Don't forget to read that. Read that little message right below. Pick your aspect ratio. I'm going to go with landscape because it's basic. I'm just going to create the map. Give it a moment to load. And we were going to get this started. You know, sewer maps are a lot like just a regular dungeon. You know, you just have a series of rooms. You have long hallways, piping, this kind of stuff. It's a relatively the same idea as kind of making a dungeon. So this shouldn't be too difficult. Now, when I start right away, and I know I'm going to be making an interior, like a sewer, you're not going to see all the dirt and the stuff beyond the wall, right? So it's just going to be your negative space. So I, what I like to do is make my whole BG, and that it's going to be right here when you have that mask tool. Sorry about that mask tool. You're going to see that there's an add mode and a subtract mode, but I, this right here is the subtract mode. This is going to be the BG. This is going to be the add or the FG. Just a quick explanation with that. So now the BG is obviously going to be the background BG, right? So I'm going to make the whole thing black. I'm going to go switch over to color. This is in the brush tool. Go to color, pick the color black, pick this rectangle shape and go all the way across. So click, hold, drag all the way across and you can just press apply. And now the BG is set to black, but you're not done yet. We also have to apply what the texture is going to be on the FG layer. So I'll go over and just grab the rectangle shape, just drag it across and press the add mode, press add. And now I have this nice shape and I want to decide what I want my FG layer to be. So I'll go back into that catalog, go to texture, open the catalog with the F key, turn off my custom ones here. And I'm going to go into the entire pack structure, turn off every single pack and just keep sewer. And so this is not going to be the texture that we're going to stick with for the whole FG. It's just that it's just a bottom layer that I can work with. So it's not permanent. It's just a layer to work with better than this green because I don't expect a sewer to have grass and dirt and stuff like that. So we're not going to do that. So I'll stick with that rectangle shape, switch to the FG that you can press the one key or press the two key to go to background. So one key, two key, make sure it's set to FG, drag, hold, go across, press enter. And so now we have that. Now, once we're done with that, we also want to mess with uh, some of the mask features. So you look right here, you have mask right here. Click this, you'll see advanced settings and you're going to see enable masks effects. This is going to turn all the mask effects off. So you'll notice that the shadows, the halo that's around it, it's all gone. Watch what happens when I turn it back on. Everything's there. Well, we're going to use this to our advantage. So one thing I like to do is sometimes it's really difficult to understand the, like the layout of your interior structure, especially like a dungeon. Like, should I have a small room, a big room? Should it be claustrophobic and scary with lots of tight hallways, making it difficult to get into open battles. So think about that kind of stuff. And the way that I like to set that up, particularly with interiors, is I just use the shape tool. I use the mask tool and I press it to the add mode. I'm going to make a series of shapes that's going to be the interior. And then what's really nice with that is, is that I can also go use that add mode to paint in separately my 
interior from my exterior. So you know the difference between what is inside the sewer and what's outside of it, right? So that black represents outside of the sewer. This is going to be the inside. I want to keep playing with these options. So I want to turn off the ripple effect. Never heard of a never heard of uh, dungeons that had ripple effects coming off their borders. That's that's weird, right? You don't need that one. You don't need outer shadow. That's that white. We're going to get rid of that. We don't need that. We are also going to remove stroke. Don't think we need it, but I'm going to keep inner shadow because I'm going to make this the walls. Now we can go back and line our walls with uh, with wall stamps, and that's entirely up to you, but you don't have to do that. You can just do all the wall work with just the mask tool alone, and we'll show you how to do that. First, I want to, though, I want to decide the inner shadow, and the inner shadow represents the ambient inclusion from the wall to the floor, so that way it looks like there's a shadow, and that's what's going to help to make the wall pop out. So I go into the inner shadow. I'm going to choose black, of course. I'm going to change the blur. I'm going to bring the blur in quite a bit. And let's actually go with stroke as well. And I'm going to make the stroke black, not this brown color. There we go. Give that a moment. There we go. A little bit better. Go back into that out, or not outline. Sorry, go back into inner shadow. And we're going to keep pushing this shadow further out, a little bit darker. Oh, maybe a little bit more. No, we can even go more. There we go. That looks just dandy to me. Okay, so now we've set the settings for the mask tool properly. I'm going to get rid of this whole thing, so I'll just go back with the shape tool and just press subtract, or you can press the D key. I'll just press that D key. It's going to go ahead and remove that whole thing. So now it's gone. Now I can switch back over to the add mode. With it, I'm going to make a series of shapes to make thing. And what I like to usually start with is a large central chamber because sometimes when you're in a sewer or a dungeon, combat can get really frustrating when you're back to back or you're in a line and your other teammates can't, uh, it's too tight quarters to the, where they can't participate in a combat situation. So adding in a larger open space within your dungeons or sewer is super nice that your characters can kind of move around a little bit, stretch, get some, get some air, being in a tight tunnel. So I start with a large chamber first, and it can be in any shape you want. It can be a circle. There's also this rectangular shape, or not rectangular, but this polygon shape here, and you can change the sides with this up here like this, so change the sides if you want this kind of a shape. It doesn't matter what shape you want, whatever you're going to go with. Let's go with this because it's kind of fun. We'll make this a, a central a central chamber. And I'm going to put it right, not too center. I don't want to make it exactly in the center. So I'll put it a little off center, just a little bit. And then I'll press that add mode. And then here's that first section. And then we can take this rectangle shape and we can just start putting in some random rooms. So you can go ahead and just take this, push it right over here, maybe go like this, or you can have it lined up against right here like this bring it down press enter there you go you can go ahead and make it bigger if you want let's make a, another chamber that's a little bit big like this and it's okay to have multiple large chambers it's okay to make changes and we will we're just going to make the overall shape first and then we'll go in with the subtract mode with the edgy brush we'll make some sections of the wall look like they're collapsed as you would expect and a whole bunch of other stuff, paths, caverns that have edgy walls instead of these straight lines. These straight lines look kind of difficult or kind of hard on the eyes. Don't worry, we'll be fixing that too. So let's go in with our shape. Let's add in, enter here, going that way. Let's add in another one here like this. Let's maybe rotate it just to make it a little bit different. Add that shape. Let's go another one over here, make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to rotate it. And we'll go over and let's put one a circular one maybe over here like this. We'll make it a little bit bigger. And maybe even kind of an oval oval shape might be interesting. Press enter. And we can also just make a path in here go leading to it. And we'll mess with scale momentarily. First, we'll just create our general shape. Let's make another one going this way. Like this. Enter, 
and then another one right here. All right, anyone have any questions so far? Let me know or let Philip know. There we go. So now we have this kind of nice shape. This center part is maybe where the, all the pipes come together. Maybe there's some kind of sewer creature in there. We don't know. We'll get to the story when we get to the detail part. So now that we've set that up, now we can kind of decide what we want to do next. Now it's up to you whether or not you want to maybe pick some walls and you want to just like a well after you dig a well you line you brick up the walls of the well right same thing with this and it's up to you if you really want to do that or not you don't have to let's go into the catalog the stamp catalog o key click the f key and i'm going to go into the pack structure of uh, the style i'm going to turn everything off and just go straight over to sewer since that's what we're kind of doing i'm going to expand all we're going to open it up and there's a lot of different options for sewer stamps in here some nice stuff and you don't have to limit yourself to just sewer stamps as well it's just this is a good start it's got the sewer walls it's got some fungus it's got stairs the pipes so it's a good start obviously to go with this and i'm going to look at the walls and see what we want and it looks like there are varying walls king clown asks i was once told that maps made in diagonal view is hard to use with a grid uh, we don't often use grids. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to put a grid. A lot of VTT options just have their own grid that you put on top of your map. So I, honestly, with using a VTT, I don't even put a grid on the uh, incarnate map. Don't even bother with that. Just use the one from your VTT. That's just my suggestion. So now we have two. It's a good question, by the way. Uh, there are a couple options here. There's this lighter uh, kind of orangish yellowish kind of color that looks like sandstone kind of and then we have this greenish kind of color and those are our kind of our options for walls and so um, we can decide if we want to talk about like a color theme we can think about complementary colors what looks good together tetrary colors we can think about what we want so let's look back real quick at our ground color we have this kind of greenish color here let's put down two walls and just see how they look and then we can kind of work from there so we have this green set Oop, looks like it's loading the stamp and then i'm going to go ahead and put another one in here one second let's put in this yellow one okay so now we have these two walls and i'm going to put them up against right here like this and i'm going to not put it over where the shadowing is you just move it to the side to where you at least have some shadowing like that. Let's also put this one down and we can take a look and see which one works better. Take this one. I'm gonna turn the shadows off on both of these since we don't need that. None, don't need shadows on these. Or you can or you can set it to layer, it's up to you. If you were looking for how do I change the settings for layers, for layer shadows, go to that right panel. Under layers, you'll see scene settings. And it just like with the other shadows, let's just go ahead and play with these global settings that's what i would describe these are kind of global settings i'm going to push the shadow all the way out like this and i'm going to make sure that both of these are set to layer and i think all walls are set to layer now that i've set uh the global uh the global settings for basically the walls now i can wherever i put them you're going to have this black halo going around it acting as kind of the ambient inclusion of the walls and it will help to augment or help to pretty much work with the shadow we already have here on the edge now i don't know which one looks better honestly i kind of feel like both of these walls go well with these textures but i also like how yellow this is and those yellow walls look really nice and so i might actually end up using these and so i'll just line one room for now just for now and if something ends up being too long see this right here this is kind of problematic right here you can go into the advanced settings you're going to go down advanced settings at the bottom go to transform and you're going to change the height i believe it should be the height and just go down 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 until it reaches the right size that you want i can copy and paste that put it here or there should be a shorter one as well that you can pick i believe right there 
and then just put them all on like this and let's just uh, turn off random and just use the longer ones okay let's go ahead and move this so now you have your basic wall and you already see that you have nice shadows so it already looks like it's popping out. Remember, contrast is what causes something to pop out. So if you put a shadow, a black texture or a black color underneath a stamp, that stamp is going to pop out, especially when the wall is, especially when that stamp is very light. You see how bright the wall is? And then that shadow underneath helps to make it pop out more. Of course, if you want it to seem like it's even deeper, you can go in with your shadow, with your brush tool, Go to circle brush you can go to like 50 percent bring the shadow down and you can add a really nice hard edge here if you want to really make the final step to make it pop out that's up to you it's more work i mean it's definitely worth it but it's not something that you have to do but it's something to help to make your wall pop out more by throwing in that nice dark edge shadow that's how you really make it pop that's how you make these walls pop. And I, we could maybe go with both walls. It's okay if we uh, don't use uh, both. You could have one section starting with this, with this wall set, and then it goes into another one. We can totally do that. In fact, let's just do that. Let's put make another room with these. So we'll piece these together. Just give a moment. This is time consuming. I absolutely agree. It's whew, takes a while, but you know, it's up to you how you want to go about it. Again, you could have gone without putting walls down, but me, I'm pretty I'm pretty formulaic. I like to generally line my walls or line my, my rooms with wall with the walls. Again, not necessary if you don't want to. Is there a stand to create wooden floors or do I have to use tables as flooring? Ask Astral at view, absolutely there is. Absolutely there's wooden flooring. Go to that catalog, texture, go in here, and just type in, let's go with remove this right here. Let's select all, and then just type in wood. Look at this, you have wood floor, small wooden floor, wooden floor here, damaged, damaged wooden floor from the Elven pack, Gothic horror, lots and lots of wood. You should not have to at all piece a bunch of tables together to make your wooden floor. Oh no, I hope you weren't doing that. <laughs> oh man, that'd be so frustrating. I've been putting these tables together all day. I finally made the first room. <laughs> no, don't do that, don't do that. Oh no. Well, yeah, always be sure that when you're looking for something uh, make sure you have every pack selected in the style and also you can just click search all there's a toggle at the top next to show titles beneath the search bar and you'll see search all styles if you select that it will search for the textures in all styles or or stamps as well just be careful when you're Matt when you're crossing textures from different styles make sure that they kind of match up because sometimes using stamps and textures from different styles and mashing them up can't doesn't really give the desired result that you want at least that's my opinion of course you what might work for you might be entirely different my way is definitely not the only way or even the right way it's just the way that i like to do it so i'm going to piece a bunch of these smaller ones together and we're going to create the first room right here. Let's put these together. Oh, one thing that I forgot to also show was the edgy brush. So I just kind of skipped a step. So let's do that real quick. S switch right over to the edgy brush. So go to your mask tool, M key, the shape. There's no shortcut key. So just click shape. Then turn off your smooth toggle because you don't want your edges to be smooth. And then bring the size down. And you notice again that we were talking about how straight these lines are of these rooms well a sewer is probably going to have some collapsed sections some cavern like uh areas and so you are going to use this add mode of the brush tool with the edgy brush without smooth to kind of create sections that are going to make it look like there's some collapsed or it's a cavern and it's also going to give a rest to the eye because there's so many straight lines in this thing and that just looks weird so we're going to go in and add this now keep in mind that the shadow that we're using, the shadow and the interior shadow or the inner shadow, is so 
deep that if you make a little small section like this, watch when I make a little small section, the shadows are going to fill it in. So you don't want to make little tiny areas with this method because again, that shadow, that inner shadow you have is so, the distance and the blur is so big that it's going to fill up most of the room being that small. So you want to make sure your brush size is big enough and you want to create rooms that are large enough to where those shadows aren't going to be like, whoa, what the, what the poo is going on here? It is a sewer. And you can kind of create these shapes, these nice kind of broken up shapes like this, and it will kind of break it up. It's nice. Let's go in here. You can add here, break up these edges. So it's not the straight line here too. Let's just put some edges here. I don't want it to be perfect. So edge here, here. There we go. Let's go put some here, edginess here. We're getting edgy, folks. Edge Lord over here. Ah, oh, here we go. All right, this looks good. It was just too much. Just, just too much. I don't like to see that much. No many straight lines. Too many straight lines. Hurts my eyes. Ah, go away. All right, here we go. All right. Maybe even put some sharpness in it. There we go. Not really a fan of how straight those edges are as well. This, 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 this. there we go. All right. I think let's take a step back and look at it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Much, 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 much better. Much, much better. Sweet. The hard part will be trying to wall these sections, and that's something that you don't have to do. That's right. Embrace the chaos. Give the chaos to the chaos lords. Feed them. Feed the chaos lords. They require absolute mayhem at all times. And you can't go wrong with mayhem. Come on. <laughs> okay, so we got these sewer walls here. Okay, maybe we want to create the idea that these sewer walls are broken because you see you have this section right here. And so the way we'll represent that is just go right into open up all the packs by just clicking that fantasy battle map pack. And I'm gonna type in broken. And now there should be some broken walls in this broken kind of options here. So I'm going to look for that. Look for maybe those broken sewer walls. Maybe they'll have them. So let's go down the list here. Give it a second to kind of load. We got lots of goodies. What can I say? Let's type it in here. Let's see. Ooh. You know, I'm not seeing those broken walls in there. All right, let me take a look here. I'm going to type in sewer real quick and see if maybe they're in there. I'm pretty sure there were some broken sewer walls. Hmm, confused now. What happened? Give it a second. We'll search it all here. Oh, here we are. So here are the sewer walls, but I don't see any broken ones of any kind. Well, that's okay. We'll have to make our own, and that's perfectly fine. We know what we're doing. Okay. All right. So I, I'm going to break this up a little bit. So I'll create one here. And then I'm going to create some smaller ones to make it look like it broke off. So add a large one there, make it bigger right here. You could put it underneath it too, by the way. I'll put it down. Now I've mentioned this in other streams, but when you are trying to show that something is on top of something else, you're going to want to put the thing that's below something else a little bit darker. So I'll drop the brightness down like that. And it's to show that this brighter wall piece is higher up than this lower wall piece. And I can do that with, with a bunch of pieces. So let's put another one down here. Let's drop that brightness down. Let's put another piece, copy paste, and let's fiddle with it a little bit or transform, change the height like this. Let's put it here. And let's say that this one's higher up. So I'll just return the brightness back to the way it was. Like that, copy, paste, put another one, make it a little bit smaller, put it over here. And so we have now some broken sections and this kind of looks like the wall broke off. And this will help to kind of create that illusion that there's no wall here anymore. It's just kind of just the cavern wall. And you can throw in caverns. Would it be rubble? Absolutely. It could be rubble, 
Yeah, absolutely, Lost Gamer. Yeah, it's rubble. It's broken parts of the wall. And you can use uh, rubble. And I don't... But the thing with rubble, though, is I'm not so sure that it's the same color scheme. So if I type in rubble like this, I don't know if there will be that same type. So if I look at all the rubble here, uh, I don't know if... See, I'm not seeing any sewer rubble. And that's okay. We can make things work to our advantage. So if you want, you can use this sewer rubble, this rubble right here. It's just regular uh, gray. When you look at it, see how it's just gray? We can boost the saturation and we can change the hue a little bit to where there's some green highlight and then drop the brightness down. And now we've kind of changed it to kind of suit better to make it look like it's more part of the sewer wall. So that cha those changes are really helpful when you're kind of doing it. And it's kept those things. So now I'm just gonna copy and, I'm just gonna single click a couple of them like this, place them down, and then I'll probably as well make some smaller ones because rubble doesn't come in one size. Rubble's not all just large rubble. Like you go into an Old Navy or a store and you go to buy pants or shirt. It does not just nicely lined up large brick small bricks okay so you have to change up that kind of size a little bit of things to make it kind of fit better and we're not going to stop here too we'll be sure to play with textures as well underneath now that i've placed all that rubble there and it kind of matches a little bit better with uh the the texture that i'm using let's go ahead or not texture with these walls let's take a look zoom out 145 changes, let's save, absolutely. Oops, I accidentally canceled my saving. We're gonna call this uh, gutter, gutter mouth. That's the name of this, uh, name of this sewer. Yeah, gutter mouth sewer, yeah. Agreed, agreed. I hope so. <laughs> my mom would not be proud of me. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, yeah, so far so good. I kind of don't mind that green outline there, and we'll probably put that on the whole thing. So the whole, the beginning part is just kind of lining the walls after you put the overall structure together. Let's go back, mess with our walls. And I believe I saw some circular ones, so we can go in and place our circular walls. And we might have to do some changes because this doesn't look like it's quite wide enough. So we'll have to go in to our transform feature and change the width. So they kind of match a little bit. So we'll push that one right there over the ledge. I want a little bit of shadow there. And I'm gonna copy and paste that and put the next one right on there like that. I'm gonna rotate it just a hair. All lined up, nice. And I'm gonna go and put the next piece on here. It's kind of easier to do your walls when you already have uh, some of that, some of the sewer space already there. It's a little bit harder, I feel, uh, when you're piecing all the walls together first to make the shape and then fill it in with the add mode. And I have in before advocated for that method, but actually I find it a little bit easier to just warp the stamps to work uh, to the walls. And that way you already have your shape figured out instead of trying to figure out the shape and the walls at the same time. And that can be kind of frustrating. Start with making the shape first, put your walls down over it. And you can always, if you feel like you make a mistake, like some of the wall is sticking out, like right here, you see there's some of that right there. You can just fill it in with the add mode. And I would recommend not using the edgy shape for filling in little spaces like this. If you use the edgy brush, it might go out. So instead, just go in like this and just fill it in like that. So that way uh, you don't have to have to do any weird stuff. So it's a little bit easier in my opinion to do it that way. I'm gonna go ahead and put these two together. Actually, those look a little long, so let's go with a smaller one. All right, there we go. Yeah, that looks good to me. That looks fine, there we go. I'm putting it together, let's take a step back and look at it. Yeah, so far so good, I'm enjoying it. I'm gonna give a break from the green part and maybe go with continuing with putting these walls together for this section. And we'll only piece together just one little bit more of this section. We'll go right over to decorating, adding details and all that stuff. I don't wanna do the same thing the whole time. We can come back to this 
That's what I recommend. If you ever get discouraged, which believe me, it's going to happen for all my art stuff that I like to do, I get very easily discouraged because I, you know, maps not looking like the way I want it to. It's like, this doesn't look the way I want. I'm done. I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> Poop. You know, that happens. It's easy to get discouraged. Like, I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way this is going. If you get really bored of putting this, the walls together, take a step back. You've already wall bricked in one room. Go ahead and start putting stamps in that room. Designate scale by putting one stamp in, decorating, textures. Do all this stuff. This is to keep you from getting discouraged because believe me, it's going to happen. Usually within the first 20 minutes to an hour, I absolutely hate my map. I want to catch my computer on fire, then throw it out the window, and then pee all over it. Okay, so this is generally what happens if you just stick to one thing and you get really bored. Just move on to the next one. So that's what I recommend doing. <laughs> it's easy to fix. Just stop working on a section that's frustrating you. You're like, ah, the walls just aren't turning out the way I want then, you know, step away and move on to something different. So from here, we can go ahead and just put some stuff inside of a room to, you know, for, start setting scale. And we can also decorate by start putting in some textures. So let's say this first room right here is going to be tile. Okay. And now if you are going to use tile as a texture, know that the tile might not line up properly with the grid that you're using for a VTT. So this is where that problem comes in, where you have to be very careful about deciding whether or not you want to add a, a tile texture onto your map. Okay, that is, mm, mm, mm. that can be kind of frustrating. So keep that bit in mind. I'm going to go ahead and close out the whole pack structure, just leave the sewer textures open. And I had those green, those are kind of a greenish, uh, greenish wall. And so what I might want to consider doing is having uh, some of the greenish wall have a green texture that's, uh, what am I thinking here? Have the center part of the room be a different tile texture than the, uh, the part along the wall. It's kind of hard to explain, but I'll show you real quick. First, I'm going to use the edgy brush and I'm going to turn smooth off and I'm also going to turn the size down and I've mentioned this in the last stream always when you're using the edgy brush drop your opacity down generally below 25% and the reason why I say that is this right here watch what happens when I use the edgy brush when like this it's gonna show out with very little transition on the side there I like to make sure to just drop it down to below 25 19 works fine I'm going to increase the size and the reason why I'm using the edgy brush is because it's going to kind of look like there is uh, it's going to make it somewhat look like I'll actually bring this up this would be kind of fun bring it up a little bit we're going to show that some of the tile is covered in this disgusting slime that we've used for the bottom part of our floor and then some of it is tile so we'll go in like this and what's really nice is you can use the negative space and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about real quick let me grab this path tool. I'm going to highlight these sections so you know what I'm talking about. So you see here that there are these um, these sections right here. You'll see there's some negative space. Look at this green right here. You see those big fluffy artifacts? Let's just call that the positive space. And everything in, around that is the negative space because sometimes it's hard to know how to texture something it's hard to make it look flow and to blend it right the trick then is to use textures and use the negative and positive space within textures with a lot of artifacts to put in another texture so that's the trick and just gathering an eye for this is helpful so I'm gonna take this negative space and I'm just gonna go in with single clicks and just do the spacing, the spaces where there isn't that weird kind of mossy looking pooey pile. I don't know what it is, poo pile. We'll call it pooey pile, ooey, ooey, ooey pile. That's what we're gonna call it. We're gonna call it the ooey pile. And just single click like this, go in here in these negative spaces, and it's gonna make it kind of look like some patches of the ground are tiled and there's no slime on it. And so that kind of creates a nice transition. 
And I, I kind of like that. It's called, it's blending and it was super easy. All I did was just use two textures. I didn't use three textures to blend them to make them fit well. I just took one texture that's on the FG layer and then lightly with single clicks in the negative space, what we've defined as negative space with this tile. And that, and what's also nice with this is that you might not have to rely on the grid. You don't have to use on this because it's not pure tile. Okay, you have little sections of tile and sections of filth. We're going to call it filth. Filthy. It's just filthy in between those tiles. Okay, filthy. And so now you don't have to worry about the tile texture being too dominant over the grid that you're going to be using in your VTT. So it's nice to sometimes do that. It's okay to use a tile texture with your map. Again, just be sure that you, uh, when you're going into the VTT, that you just scale whatever the just change whatever the settings is for your grid and i'm not sure what which vtt's there's a lot of different ones so now once i've set that in now i can start adding in some stamps as well so let's go in and we could create some extra walls some more walls that show the interior this room doesn't have to be some gigantic room it can be more than that so we can go in and create some internal walls, not the outer walls that represent the entirety of the room, room or rooms, but some inner walls. So that we are adding more and more rooms, making it a little bit larger. Let's go with, let's see, where's my sewer? Where are you? Where's the dirty stuff? There it is. Just glide by it like 12 times. <laughs> Isn't that nice? <laughs> All right, let's take a look. I'm going to turn off my this here. Let these stamps load. Let's take a look. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to use these sewer canal edges as I'm going to use different walls to represent the outer walls. That's the wall right here and the inner walls. It's nice to switch up the walls so that you have two kinds. So this wall set is going to be the interior walls. And again, this one is the exterior wall. So let's make a room. Let's say I want to put one here like this. We're going to go over and just say that I want to create a space where you can walk in. So I'll put one here and one right here. Okay, now let's zoom out and just see how it looks. And that's nice because you can see the difference between the two different walls. So now you, when you walk in, you go in and there's be a little, you could be a mimic in here. You can put a drain. You could put in a pipe. You can put in uh, some bodies whatever you want. So creating separate rooms kind of gives it a little bit more character and it looks looks nice. So we're going to go with that. Now let's go ahead and create some other parts. And it's sometimes it's nice to go with not perfectly straight. You can go with curvatures in your wall if you want, and that can work out really well. So let's just place this against here like this. And I'll go ahead and put it right here. And you could say that these are two rooms right here. Some curvature is really nice to make you remove that straight lines, especially if you have a room that's super straight like this with these straight walls. It's nice to put in a couple curved walls to break up all those straight lines. Remember, it's nice, it's a little bit more natural to have some kind of curvature in your composition so that that way your eye will have this nice curve to follow. So we have a nice curve right here. When I go in like this, there's this nice curve and it even extends beyond that. The curve goes like this. So adding in those curves will help break up these really, really straight, straight, straight lines that you're dealing with. So curvature is a way to kind of save your map from being, ooh, ooh my eyes are going straight, straight, straight. Super helpful. I'm going to go ahead and make sure, just get rid of all these paths so you can go up to the selection tool, V key. Just first select all to turn all off. Select path. All my paths are selected. Press delete, done. Now, of course, remember that after you've done that, you want to go back and select all. Otherwise, you'll be going, why can't I select these walls? I don't understand. What the fudge muffins? What the, what the, what the? No, no, you got to go back, select all. So that way you can kind of select your stuff again. So the sewer's coming together. Oh yeah, it's getting dirty. It's the way I like it. One thing also that it can look really nice is if you put, again, additional shadows. So let's go with that color. I'm going to go with black. And you can go in along this edge. Oopsie, not with an edgy brush. You don't want to do that. Tsk, tsk, tsk. 
you can go back in and line your edges if you want to continue giving them a little bit more height if you wish because sometimes the object shadow that you're that are on that stamp might not be enough that's up to you i kind of want to add it in because i think it looks kind of nice just makes it pop out more and i like that pop who doesn't like the pop i do there we go so it's going to make it pop out more if you're not satisfied with it let's see it made it a little bit too a little too much there i was getting a little a little too cray cray with it don't want to get too cray cray so you can always go in with that and we can fill in with a lot of things here so if once you've kind of made your interior walls you can go in and start decorating things you can add in let's check out what we got in here open up where are you here we go i mean you can start putting in all kinds of fun things if you'd like but you can make this first part you can add in strange fungus growing on the walls so we can go with this stuff right here i'm going to bring it down a little bit and it's this will also help to break up your lines and whenever you put these th things together like this, make sure you cluster a couple of them together or have clusters nearby. So I've put a couple like this, put one in this corner and make sure they're varying sizes. You don't want them all to be absolutely massive. And again, this is gonna help to kind of break up those straight lines because you have this weird fungus lining on the wall. So that's really helpful, really nice to break up the straight lines on top of the curvature. And then from there, you might wanna throw in, maybe there's a pipe that leads down in here maybe there's someone stuck in there and you have to have to get them out there's a lot of different options that you can choose from maybe put it in the corner right here instead maybe there's creatures coming out of this pipe uh maybe there's a uh, a a cursed muse who lives in the sewer and whenever uh, and then during the day they turn into a rat and maybe at night they turn back into a human i mean Think about the details and stuff. That's really going to depend on the setting and what you're what you're wanting to do. So that's my suggestion for that. I'm going to put this in this corner right here, and you'll see there's a lot of uh, dark against it, and it kind of looks to me that this looks a little too bright. You would expect in this kind of corner right here to be a little bit darker. So go to filters and just drop that brightness to whatever you think is best. So that way it kind of looks like it's dark and in that corner. So there's one pipe. Now we want to play with pipes in general. It's a sewer, right? So we want to think about sewer pipes. So let's create this, that sewer system part. So we want to go in and grab a bunch of pipes. And there are various options for pipes. I think there's this one right here. And I don't know if this one has the clipping mask or not. Let me just check. I'm going to put it down right here. It would be weird not to have a sewer in here. So let's make sure that we put the sewer part in. So I'm gonna make it about this, this wide, and I'm gonna turn off the shadows. I don't really need them. And we're gonna first create a route where, because it's a sewer, right? So what what is above us? Is it a parliament building? Is it a inn? Like, what is it? What is underneath here? And that will kind of determine like how much piping is it? If is, is it like, is it a, private residence and there's a couple pipes leading down to the sewer section is it underneath a massive manor house lots of different options right so we got to think about that let's go ahead and do some saves is there any questions people have so far please speak up just be like hey numnut speak to me i have a question answer it now or there will be punishments <laughs> deliver to me the answers and if you don't know them <laughs> you will be punished Okay, I'm gonna copy and paste a couple of these together. Lining these up isn't too hard, just putting them together like this. And I think I might have a section where there's a circle in the center. So I think that will be like the main cesspit, basically. And I'll go ahead and use these stamps right here. Off with the heads! I wasn't using mine anyway. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna make that cesspit part. So I'm gonna piece two of these together to kind of create that. Create that. Hey, first time chatter. Theo Mius, Matthias, welcome. How do you create bends in, in the pipe? Well, there should already be bent pieces in the pipe. So watch what happens when I scroll through. You'll see some pieces here. There's a bend right there. There's a bend right there. 
uh, a smaller bend, another bend. So that's how I would go about it, just using the bends that are already in the pipe. Thank goodness, right? Can you imagine trying to figure a way to bend a pipe? Ooh, that would be frustrating. Huh? Unless you're, you know, you know, kind of like a circus person and you have like the pipe bending abilities. Like, <laughs> just bend that, like super cool ability. Like, yeah. What I do is I bend pipes. It's like Bender, right? From Futurama. Yeah, I'm a Bender bot. It's what I do. <laughs> All right, copy, paste, put this one down. It looks like there are no clipping masks on this, so we'll have to play with that. I'm going to make the pipe just a little bit smaller. I want room on the sides for characters. Is there a version to make custom degrees? There is not. Uh, though, you can make custom degrees by probably putting together these smaller ones. See, these have a small shape to it. So you probably could go in like this and change various angles if you want, but that would be my suggestion. Yeah, that's a good asset idea. I don't know how you would do that, though. I don't know how you would shape it. Uh, you would have to make a bunch of little tiny little sliver, 25 degree slivers, and then piece them together. So, But I do understand that, and it's, it's extremely frustrating when there are fixed angles, because then it's kind of hard so to kind of line it up with your walls and everything. So I totally, totally understand that. Very frustrating. I, I get that. Okay, so now that I've done that, you notice that this pipe, you, I can see the wall underneath it. This is where we get to do clipping mass. Mm, mm, the beauty of clipping mass. Uh, I cannot tell you the great love for clipping mass that I have. They are fantastic. If you don't know what a clipping mask is, it's basically a stamp that only shows the FG layer. Watch what happens when I place it on the canvas. You'll notice right away that it's hiding uh, the stamp. It's catching whatever's on the FG layer, the clamping stamp. So I'm gonna first take this, of course. I'm gonna drop these down several layers. And I'm going to drop this down one layer, so it's below. And you'll notice that I don't see, with the clipping mask, I don't see anymore uh, the wall that creates the cesspit. Okay, so that's kind of nice. So now I can go in and create a couple more like this. Oopsie, I want actually to select these two, copy paste, and I can even select those three. There we go, we're gonna rotate them and have another one going into this room. Let's go like that, there we go, looking nice. That one, and we'll add in another one going upward too. So we'll flip, rotate, bring this down. Excuse me, there we go, all right. Now we have that. And we're gonna also want to make sure that we find a place to connect these. So we'll put some pieces together. Let's see here, not like that. We gotta figure out how we wanna put this together. Let's take a look. I think there are some pipings right here. And we're gonna create a top down, let me see if I can find it, this one right here. This is a different pipe, it's not from the same, it's from the same pack, but not from the same uh, stamp set so it's different I'm using these ones and these ones and what I'm doing is I'm creating a pipe that goes down that goes down so maybe uh, this, this sewer goes up through here or down through here using gravity and goes through here don't really know it's up to you I mean how much thought you want to put in to it because you could be a total engineer about it and map out the entire above ground part and then once you've Added, created that top ground part, then you can probably texture that or turn it into a stamp and then create the sewer system below. But that would take hours for me to put that all together. And so I don't really want to do that. I just want to give you the general idea on how to put a sewer together, just knowing what stamps to use, how to line walls, what kind of stuff to put in the sewer, interior walls, and just how to use the stamps. So this is not the only way and this is not really meant to be the fan, most fantastic sewer, but I just hope that techniques will help you to try to figure out how to work on your next sewer. I have, I have, I'm having a problem with my clipping mask, but I'm working with a big open space. I noticed there is an edge I cannot fix with texture. You guys got any idea how I can deal with that? I'm not sure what you're referring to. Maybe Philip can kind of investigate further because I don't think I understand entirely. Sorry about that, Your Majesty. I'm sorry, Your Majesty. Don't, don't knock off my head. I like using it. I'm gonna copy and paste these. Have these kind of going all the way up. Boop de doo. We're doing it. We're doing it. 
Copy paste. There we go. Hey, first time chat, Stephenson. Hey, is there any way that we're, after I build a map, how I could show one room after the other to my players? Uh, so I talk about a full map that you have each individual room where well, you could group each stamp that's in that room and then hide it. Or you could take a clipping mask and then put it on top of it. So I'll give you a quick example. So let's say that you want to hide an entire room. How would I go about doing that? <sighs> like a fog of war is basically what you're talking about, where you can't really see anything. And that one can be kind of tough. So I'll actually show you how I go about doing stuff like that. So here's a clipping mask right here. I don't want that one. Actually, I prefer a hard edge. Sorry, this is soft edge. We don't want soft edge. So this is not the best method to go about it, but you know, until we can create a fog of war option, of course, which we can do that. I'm actually gonna save and refresh the page because I'm seeing that some stamps aren't showing up, but uh, Stefanson, absolutely. I'll show you how to do it. Clipping mask, because clipping masks, as I just said, they hide things. So until we add a fog of war option, which would be sick, by the way, I absolutely love the idea of a, a fog of war. That'd be sweet. But until then, you can use clipping masks. You can use clouds. You can use uh, all kinds of various things. So if you have a room, if you have a, uh, if you already have an exterior or an interior building, and you have the background that's black, then clipping masks are great because the clipping mask will also hide a room and it won't uh, it won't look weird because you can paint over it. So let me just quickly log back in here and get this fixed and we'll get that started. So I'm gonna open this back up and I'll show you how to hide a room. I was actually just thinking about this the other day ago, the fog of war thing and fog of war would be sick. I would love that. To be awesome, but we don't have that yet. So yeah, hiding a room. Whew. Yeah, I spent quite a while trying to figure out a technique on how to do that myself. So it's super cool. Now we get to kind of do that. So clipping mask, like I said, go into here. We're gonna turn off everything in the pack structure. Just keep clipping masks. There should be a hard edge and a soft edge. Click that hard edge. I'm gonna use the square. And I'm going to click it up a couple layers and you can hide an entire room by just copy paste and line these up properly. And I'll show you what to do next. Don't worry, we're not there yet. I'll show you everything that we're doing. One second. We're going to put those together like this. And I'm going to make sure that both that all of these clipping masks are put together first. Oopsie. Select them all. There we go. I'm going to group them. I'm going to call it uh fog of war just, just call it fog if you want fog and then from there you can uh you know i don't actually this is not actually this won't work that i'm now that i'm thinking about it because it's clipping mask and there's already a layer there so the next step then is sorry about that made a mistake let's actually go with rug i didn't think ahead this is what happens don't do this folks <laughs> don't don't open your mouth without thinking first because i am so guilty of this I'm going to select all and choose a rug instead. We'll do a rug instead. Let's do a rug. And we'll try a different technique because I kind of made a mistake there. I'm going to go ahead and wait for the stamp to load. I'm going to place it down. If it will let me do that. I eh. Why? Why are you doing this, jerk? Wow. Okay. Oh man, sorry about this. One second. I'm trying to put a stamp down, but it won't let me because we're having some kind of problem here. Ah, oh, my goodness. For real? I love showcasing this. <laughs> there we go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just make the whole thing just straight black like this. And this is probably the way that you would hide a room is just place it on top like this so that room is hidden. This room is hidden this room is now hidden so that's the, the, the route that I would go about it uh, if you don't like the hard edges you can add a shadow to it so go to object and just throw in a hard shadow like this and you can do it that way if you want if you want to hide it you can do it that way lots of different options the whatever route you want to go about but just a regular uh, just a regular carpet and just resize it 
and you can hide whatever you want with it. And again, add a, add a shadow to it if you want uh, it to not be these straight lines. Unfortunately, this is like the, the most that I can think of right now. Maybe other people will have a strategy for making a fog of war, but this is the one that I've done in the past. I just just take a rug or a clipping mask. If, you're, if your whole ground is the BG layer, you can use a clipping mask as well. Just make sure you paint the FG layer, all that. Uh, oh yeah, blur. Ooh, great call, by the way. Great call. Blur. There we go. Awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good call. Good call. Yeah, the blur, you can put the blur in there and it will look a little bit nicer. So that's what I would do is just use a rug, blur, just like King Clown said. Using clouds from Watercolor City Styles also works great. Uh, just make sure you group the clouds and then call it Fog of War. And that way you can go in and edit it. I'm not going to show that here because, gosh dang, that is kind of time consuming. So I won't do that here. So now that I've done that, we can move on to this next step. Thanks for bearing with me on that long-winded journey. <laughs> Sorry about that. We'll go back in and we'll hit those sewer textures right up. And we're going to try to make the sewer just slightly different. So we have this light, kind of this darkish green glob here. You have this sewer filth, this other sewer water, and there's this green one right here. We'll probably go with that one. And first I'm going to apply it. I'm going to turn off my... Uh, Turn off my softness. I don't want that. I want a hard edge. Make sure it's set to FG. And I might even want to consider resizing it. So let's look at the size. Yeah, that looks all right. Let's go ahead and just apply it. Again, give it a hard edge like this. And then we'll fill in this part like this. Let's take a step back and just see how it looks. First. Yeah, that looks fine to me. We'll go in with filters and everything to make things match and everything. We can do that a little bit later. And we also might want to consider making some, instead of having sewer filth, you could have some kind of tiling or some kind of ground underneath here. So let's go back into textures. I'm going to click this one and I'm going to rotate it like this. And I'm going to line it up to where the line matches up with uh, the same angle that the sewer pipe is at. And you can go and check that if you want, this is at a 61 degrees. So all I have to do then is go right into this one and just type in or push 61 degrees. There you go, not too bad, 61. All right, and then I can also change the offsets and stuff like that if I want. I'm gonna go with that edgy brush. Again, of course, bring the opacity down. It's a quick question here. Uh, when I, oh, okay, I'm sorry question here and take a look here. I'll let Philip address that while I continue. If it can't be addressed by Philip, I'll go ahead and do it. Don't worry. So now that we've done that, we're going with our edgy brush, turn off that smooth. Again, if you want, you can use uh, the, you can use the negative space to put in the thing. If you want, I'm going to also try to put as much as possible along the edge because I want to show that this is kind of a walking space. So just putting in along the wall will kind of help with that. And you you can continue to keep all the tile. If you want, you can push it in. I'm gonna just do the negative spaces again. See, I'm leaving open those nice, those open space. Again, just use the negative space to your advantage. Okay, like that. That's up to you if you wanna go about doing it that way. So there's that. Okay, so there's a question in here. Yeah, I'll let Philip take care of that. All right, so there's that. And again, you know, there are issues. All right, yeah, oh, with paper. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, I have no idea how to do it with paper. Uh, you could, you're printing it out. You could just put another piece of paper on top of the section if you wanted to. Uh, that, I mean, it, when, I've, when I've done it before with printing out and you want to hide something, yeah, I you could uh, just make clouds, like just big billowy clouds, draw them on a piece of white paper, cut them out, and then just put the clouds on top of the areas you want blocked out. That would be my suggestion, just me personally. Okay, let's do this. All right, let's take a look here. We'll keep going. Let's go texture. Also, I just wanna mention that if you rotate a texture, uh, change the offset, the size, whatever, make sure that you favorite it so that way you don't, if you want to go back to it, 
you won't lose it because the recently used can only hold about mm, I think about 12 total maybe maybe more than 12 24 I'm not sure uh, 12 or 14 I forgot what it was uh, that the recently used can only hold so many so what you don't want to do is uh, you go through 30 textures and then find out that all your textures have been replaced by your recent ones and so favoriting is a great way to kind of keep it the favorite section is right here you can see it right there if you're looking for it you always generally want to save your uh, your textures when you've uh, done any kind of editing to them that's just my suggestion let's continue on with the pipe here all right things are looking good we're doing all right not my favorite sewer sewer scene ever but hey we only got a small time frame to work with of course that's all right let's finish up our walls and then we can we can continue on with other stuff so let's just go in and I'm gonna put in my other walls right here because we should at least finish what we started I'm gonna do it very very quickly this is the part where it might get kind of difficult because you're putting two different kinds of walls up against each other and that can look kind of odd so just be careful when you're doing that I'm also going to do a weird wall formation that's going to look really funky and I'm just going to tilt a bunch of smaller pieces like this oops let's remove that one and I'm just going to tilt them really weird so put one here here like this put one like this and we're going to create this really awkward looking shape just rotate a bunch of these like this to kind of create this odd shape and that will make it look more interesting as well time consuming but it's kind of worth it. it looks kind of nice when you do it okay and I'm gonna do the same thing here I'm just gonna do a really weird really jagged weird weird wall shapes like this just to kind of give it some interesting character make it kind of fun and I'm gonna rotate each one of those as well so I'll just rotate them in a little bit so I'll rotate one a little bit that way a little bit that way and this one a little bit this way and the reason why I'm gonna do that is because we're in a sewer and there's plate tectonics going on and the walls even walls on on the surface they warp they change the weathering weathering can cause warping uh, the tectonic plates can cause warping right especially underground right so having your walls not be perfectly straight and just taking the time to make some really kind of weird crooked looking walls can show that these walls have been here a little while some time has passed and it's really kind of caused the walls to warp so it's nice to do that you see the nice weird looking shape here I actually kind of like it, it looks kind of fun and it's kind of a fun little thing that you can do to show again weathering uh, erosion things moving tectonic plates it's always nice to factor in those kind of things and it just looks interesting to not have a perfectly circular, perfectly uh, uh, curved shape, perfectly curved walls. It's nice to throw in some variation to really give it character. And I'm gonna do that here. And of course, I'll have to go in and change, remove some stuff. But I'm gonna do this just because I want to. It looks kind of nice. And it kind of gives it some interesting character to it. We'll go into here. And we're gonna also, once we finish the walls, we'll go in and finish in the piping throwing in additional pipes, throwing in some floating sewer waste, and maybe throwing in some floating bodies, some rats, some cockroaches. I mean, you know, all the fun stuff. You know, all the things that everyone loves, you know. Everyone loves stepping on a cockroach and then having cockroach babies uh, living on their on their feet. You know, I mean, that's gross, you know. Not, not the best thing. I kind of wonder, I, I kind of think that maybe a... a cursed rogue or not cursed rogue but a cursed uh a cursed uh bard would be kind of fun maybe they <clears throat> charmed the wrong person and uh the results didn't go so well and then they were cursed to live in the sewer with their gutter mind you naughty bard you can't sleep with everything gosh mr bard what are you doing gosh there are consequences all right, just like before, I'm going to throw in uh, some smaller pieces. I'm going to put them down a layer, and I'm going to make them a little bit darker. I know, Super Edge. Hey, first time chat. Welcome, Docs Sunrain. Welcome. Glad you're here. Again, we're going to drop the brightness 
and the layer. And I kind of want to create this idea that there are these stamps that are, or this rubble that's on the ground. Put a bunch here, here, here. And I even want to put another one that's the same brightness and put it maybe on top like this. There we go. There we go. Oh, let's go up a layer actually. There we go. I'm going to remove this rubble right here. It doesn't seem to go well with it. There we go. Now let's take a look at our walls. How cattywampus and nutty are they? Oh yeah, this look nice. This is so, so nice. Mm. Chef's kiss. Yeah, I like the walls. They look, they look cool. They look cool. I'm digging, I'm digging. And we'll have to go back over with the add mode and the subtract mode and just kind of clean up the mess that I've made. Naughty, naughty. I swear I'm responsible, sorta. Just a little bit. No, 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 that's a stretch. Just, just a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to subtract in here. I'm going to go in and just kind of remove all of this stuff. Make sure you use that circle brush and not that edgy brush because that might go poo-poo for you. So don't do that. Go in here. Do that. Let's take a look. What other sections? It's kind of bleeding out right there. And all along this edge, too, it looks like I got some. Tsk, tsk, tsk. And I'll also have to go back with the add mode. And... Fill in these sections. Let's go back over, just do a little review, look at it. Mm -mm. No, we can probably go in and subtract a little bit more all along this edge here. There we go. Looks nice to me. Okay. All right, that looks just fine. Let's go back in. We'll continue with our piping. And we're going to use those uh, angled shapes because, hey, they look cool. Let's only go with a kind of a half like this. And then I'll go in with that longer piece. Ooh, okay, right here, like this one second. Oh, there it is. And we'll line it up like that. There we go. Looks fine. We'll put in a, then we'll go ahead and use that same piece that we got right here. Copy, paste. And a shadow is on, so we'll have to remove that. These shadows shouldn't be on, so let's remove them. Layer, none, there we go. And we can go back in and make sure we paint that texture right in there, there we go. So you have some nice curved curves there. And so you have at least several points uh, where, the, where the pipe is leading to the main cesspit that goes down to the bottom. So this could be like the first layer of the sewer, the first floor, then you go down if you want, up to you. However you wanna go about it. Uh, this is just one section, there's a lot going on here. So we'll check, and we're also gonna to wanna to check the size of, of a person as well. So I'll throw in a corpse, because hey, gotta throw in corpses. I know, I, I know, I know. Blood for the blood gods, right? Blood for the blood gods! Mm. Let's throw in a corpse. Dement, I love the way your demented little mind works. Iago. <laughs> All right, we got some corpses. All right, it's just not this person's day, unfortunately. It's just not, not going well for them. So now we can look at this pipe right here. Uh, this kind of pipe going down Super Mario style. Boop, 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 boop. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and we can put, we can kind of scale the this corpse up against here. We want to see, you know, how big a person is. And so we'll put a corpse right here. And this can be kind of our scale reference from now on. And then I made it this size because I want to factor in the room so that they can fit in between this section from here and here. I want to make sure that they can squeeze in and fit inside of there, right? There's room in here for them to walk. Okay, we have to factor in that scale. There needs to be room for them to walk. And there are these kind of like bottleneck points that are kind of nice, right? So you have open space and bottleneck spots. So it's great for combat, right? You obviously don't want to get cornered or backed into this corner right here. You maybe use the bottleneck to your advantage where uh, you a sewer, big sewer rat comes right up to here and you can just boom, hit them there so there can be choke points or they can go into the sewer part. So factoring in different uh, different areas of combat is super important, super nice to do that kind of stuff, at least in my opinion. I'll go ahead and get rid of that path as well. But that's basically what I why I put that body there. So that can happen. Let's 
also maybe do let's do some decorating let's continue with our decorating so i've already added some of this nice funky looking fungal stuff i'm sure i've seen that on my feet before a couple times i don't know <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> i didn't say that so i'm gonna put a couple of these down because i kind of think it'd be kind of fun just to add more of them and again it will kind of break up uh the strange like straightness of the walls and give it a little bit more character so we'll throw some in there and even you could say that you could even for fun say that if your a player touches it it causes them damage you know think of things you could you know put a you could select let's say that it did give off like a spores or something something dangerous you could select all from the set the object shadow just switch it over to green like this and just make sure the shadow is set up like this and so you could pretend that these eerie things give off this kind of green ugh, ew you could make it red i mean you could do whatever you want uh it's oozing oozing yellow <laughs> it's yuck <laughs> it's yuck <laughs> so up to you how you want to go about that up to you um we'll just stick with black as the shadow because i don't think that's really necessary this place is already going to smell mm, just mm, mm, mm. Like, this is the place I go when I want to sniff something nice. Ah, fresh air. Mmm. Yuck. <laughs> All right, we'll throw this in. And I don't want to put the same green, though. I'll, I'll put one down on, on here just to see what it kind of looks like. To see if the green and the yellow kind of go well together. I'm not going to use that. Let's use a different type of... Uh, let's use a different kind this time. Let's use something different. So we'll go back into the pack structure, just turn the whole thing off, go back into sewers. For me, this is just the quickest way uh, to find what I'm looking for, is I just turn every pack off and just pick the pack that I want. This way I don't have to scroll through a bunch of stuff, uh, and that way it's just what I'm looking for is right there. So now there are some other uh, kind of weird, funky stuff that we could use. There are these roots, which I want to add in there, uh, and there's also this strange uh other kind of sewer plant right here this might work well let's put one down and just see what it looks like and i think i'll just put them in the corners to make it kind of look like they're growing in the corner and i'll put them below i'm not going to put them above so i'm going to put them below like this i'm going to put them jutting out in the corner like this make them a little bit bigger and of course if they're in that corner you'd expect them to be a little bit darker so i'll drop the brightness excuse me and we'll throw in a couple more Put one in that corner. Let's put another one in this corner. Well, actually, a little, a little bit right here just to throw it in. And I'm going to create kind of a circular shape in the center. And I don't want to uh, have them all be the same size. See, these are relatively the same size, but I added a little one right there to break it up. So you don't want uh, all of these fungus things to be around the same size because then it will look a little uniform. And we're trying to avoid we're trying to avoid uniform. So just make sure you don't do that. Let's throw in another one right here. Make sure it doesn't pop out the other side. So just make sure that the wall is covering up the back side of it like that. So now you have this nice room with the green in there. So that looks nice. Let's continue with this pipe. Let's just have it curve and go somewhere else. So we'll grab a curve. Let's use this one right here. This one works just fine. We'll put that on there and then take one of the longer ones. And have it going this way and again probably turn off that object shadow my mistake or a uh, layer shadow i don't want that poop 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 go away ah there we go and we'll figure out what to do with that on how to make the shadows because this pipe kind of looks like it's just on the ground and it's okay it can be on the ground it could be higher up whatever way you want to go about it so let's just first just fill this in 65 changes we're doing good questions so far the fact that people aren't asking a million questions kind of tells me that I'm, hopefully I'm explaining it fairly well. <laughs> I don't want to do a bad job. Um, hopefully I'm making this easier for you and not harder. Like, wait a minute, now how'd you do that? What the fudge? <laughs> Oops, I think these walls are in a different layer. I'm going to select all of these, select all from this set. Oopsie, I'm going to select all of these from this set, select all from the set. And I'm going to all put them on the same layer. Layer one, there we go. I noticed that sometimes uh you might say well these walls are on different are on different layers and that can be a problem so we can fix that don't you worry so let's put this one down and let's put a couple more against the wall maybe put one right here 
put one over here in this corner. That should look good. And then maybe one over here. It looks nice. There we go. Just kind of giving it some character. Makes it look nice. Ooh, don't want it to be too big. I want at least some room. You could say also that maybe the these tendril looking things can grab you up against the wall and hold you you know all kinds of fun stuff there's a lot of different options maybe we want to create a room this room right here is where our our uh our what was i thinking our where our bard lives let's do that so let's go ahead and again fill in that negative space so look as i go around in the negative space like this and that way there's some flooring because I don't think that someone's gonna want to live just directly on the filth right so we'll put it a little bit more I mean unless you like living in your filth I mean I I don't some people do I don't know oh yeah we're definitely putting in sewer roots oh yeah baby sewer roots is on the agenda heck yeah we're gonna do it yeah yeah uh, sewer roots is actually one of my favorite stamps and I realize this is totally off what angle is this at? This is at 60, and I think that texture is at 61. So I'm going to go back into that history and just delete all those brushes. So I'll just delete it. You see, there's that mistake, right? I didn't line them up properly. My mistake. So we can fix that. That's not a hard problem. We're just going to go into our history. I don't recommend just, you know, back, 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 back. Then it starts to lag and it gets kind of annoying. So instead, go to your history and just find out where it is and then click restore just know that if you made a thousand changes you, you know uh and you want to change and you're you know you might not be able to because the change history is going to stop after a certain point okay at some point they're going to fall off the change history so just keep that in mind okay so i'll go back into my texture here i'm going to click it and i'm going to change my settings to 60. actually it still doesn't look right to me let me change it I think that looks about right. Looks fairly lined up. And I think that's all right. Let's apply it again and just see how it looks. Go with a bigger size here. And just kind of single. I'm single clicking it. Single click, y'all. There we go. There we go. All right. So there's that room. Next step, we can throw in those sewer roots. And oh man, do I love sewer roots. Sewer roots are sick. These things are so much fun. They work not just for sewers too, they're extremely useful. So I absolutely recommend using them. Let's go ahead and take some of the negative space on the wall. And by negative space, I mean just these sections right here. There's not much going on in these sections. And so it's nice to put in some things into those sections. So it's really helpful. So we've done that. Let's go and do that right now. So I'll go ahead and delete those texts, those paths. Goodbye, I just called them text. Ignore me, please. We'll go in. Throw in some sewer roots, so we'll rotate a couple. We'll go through this, go through it, and we'll put in a couple. I'm going to put it right up against the wall, or even overlapping the wall is fine to make it look like some of it's just going right over it. And we can also go in and add in a couple more right here, like this. So you have a nice root section. I would recommend putting some of the roots close to each other, so that way it kind of represents a more realistic. If you put a root like way over here, and it's the only one. Make sure you put a little bit smaller ones nearby as well. Let's put one in this corner right here to break up this corner edge right here. Like that, so that looks good. And you might even want one coming out of the ground, and that's fine too. So let's say you want to take one that comes just directly out of the ground. And so I can put one on top right here like this. And then, of course, you notice that there is a dark edge along right here. See this hard edge right here? And it's contrasting up against everything that's right here, right? It looks kind of weird. So what do you think we're going to do, right? Anyone got any ideas? What are we going to do? We're going to paint that tile a little black with some black texture on it. So that way it doesn't look really weird because the transition between this and this, just too much contrast. So let's go in, go co-color. We'll choose a little bit of this here and just sing, oopsie. That is a hard edge. You absolutely want to make sure you have a soft edge when you're doing this, by the way. And with some single clicks, I'm just going to go in and just make sure that this is kind of blended in better with that tile. There we go. Much nicer. Much, much nicer. And I might even want to change the object uh, shadow with these because it seems a little off to me. So we'll go with zero, zero, 
There we go. That's much, much, much better. And we'll make it a little bit darker and a little bit smaller. There we go. You have this nice room here. Looking good. 193 changes. Let's make some saves. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll add all those tech. Then we'll add in all the little details. And then we'll also add in t uh, some filters because, hey, filters are what make sure that all the stamps kind of blend in together because we have some varying color here. This kind of bright green that might look weird against this orange so we can fix that up by putting in filters to change it up so now we'll throw in some other stuff like we can throw in a bed this is where that person sleeps so i'll type in a bed and i'm going to select all of course and we're going to just go through all the various beds that we want i might go with like a dirty one an upturned one maybe this bard is angry that they uh what they did and so they're kind of frustrated and so we'll put like an overturned bed let's run over to our scale guide hey that's this guy right here and let's just put it right over that like that and just take a look at it and i think that looks about right that's just fine so that scale will work just fine let's go ahead and put that right there like this this is where kind of where they sleep let's see here where do i want to put this let's put it right there and let's put it below I want it to be below so that this thing's kind of sticking out above a little bit. And let's go right there. I think that looks good. So now we have that. Now we can go in and throw in other signs of life. There's crates, there's barrels, there's a bedroll. You can throw in a bedside table. Uh, lots of different options. Put a bedside table right there if you want. Lots of different options. If you don't want to do that, you can throw in a bunch of trash, dirt. There's all the varying options. I don't really care much for the shadowing though i kind of want it to be in the center instead of leaning in one direction i haven't even added light sources i'm also going to desaturate this a little bit because i want it to make it not look so vibrant i want to bring the saturation down and i might even drop the saturation down on this one as well so it makes the wood look a little bit older a little bit drier a little bit dirtier instead of that vibrant green oh i'm sorry vibrant brown <laughs> yeah yeah Listen to what I say. <laughs> Take me seriously. <laughs> okay, now we can go in and we can decorate. And again, if you don't know what to put in a room, it doesn't matter what room it is. Crates and barrels are really kind of a standard go-to. I don't know what to put in this corner. Throw in a crate. Throw in a barrel. I'm telling you, this is the way to do it. Don't do the snowy ones because that's going to look weird. Don't do that. Don't do that. Wait a minute. What's going on here? No, I'm not see I'm gonna have to gonna have to save and refresh. One second. This just happens when you're using a a web tool. So I'm gonna save, I'm gonna refresh. Where are we at? 11.22, 30 minutes. Yeah, we should be able to get this done. Thanks for bearing with me, everybody. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope that this is helping you out. Okay, I'm gonna refresh the page real quick. Sometimes when you've been working on something for a little while, uh your you might run into an internet timeout, anything like that. So just make sure you save, just save and refresh the page. If you ever bump into a bug or anything like that, save and refresh the page. If the bug is persistent, it doesn't stop, you're gonna want to, of course, contact us at our internal support. And don't worry, we will help you. And I'll show you how to get into internal support. It's just right here. You go in, help chat with support, and whoa, it doesn't work actually. That sounds like a bug, and I'm gonna report that immediately <laughs> yeah so but normally you should be able to go with help chat support and it will pop up in this corner right here so i'll be sure to go ahead and mention that as a bug uh either philip or cheryl if any of you are here feel free to go ahead and report that while i'm doing the stream if not i'll do it after the stream but it looks like there's an issue there and i'll try to maybe repro that later so let's continue let's keep going all right here we go so we've kind of done that room. We have some spare room in here and we have a room in here. Well, let's not waste any time. Let's keep adding in more details. I'm gonna type in crate and barrels. So I should show up this time because it sounds like I just had a little bit of an error there. And all right, it happens. Errors, they happen. So let's go in a crate. Are there any broken crates and barrels? Oh yeah, there are. Oh, sick, now we're talking. Yeah, yeah adding in the broken i mean who doesn't like to break stuff right i am i'm a total wrecker wreck it wreck it 
There we go. We'll throw in some cranes. Maybe drop the size down. I don't want these to be the exact same size. That can look kind of weird. That looks fine to me. I'd say throw down a rug, but I mean, is a rug going to help you in this situation? If you throw down a rug, is, it gonna, is that going to help your situation right now? Probably not. Just put a nice clean rug just right on top. Right here. Yeah, no, don't think that's going to help. <laughs> Rug's not going to help your situation in the sewer, my friends. <laughs> I'm going to call that room good. We'll go ahead and move on to the next room. I'm going to throw in some stuff. It's always nice to throw in a little a little bit of something special in every room, especially your dungeons. Uh, you don't have to do that with every single room with interiors, but with your dungeons, yeah, throw in something unique for each one. Because you see here that we made this one a room for our our bard uh we have a room here this is where our entrance room we bump into a corpse kind of giving us a heads up that like hey this place is dangerous there are corpses around here yeah it's gonna make it clear right this is this is not the place where we play games this is not the sewer of games nope this is dirty and scary all right so let's keep going go in this room here a couple options here I'm gonna actually put together a bunch of piping because you would expect a lot more pipes than just this. So why don't we go in and scale down and bring down the brightness and the uh, the layer. And I'm gonna create a series of pipes that are gonna look like they're kind of on the ground and they're a bit darker, of course, because they're meant to be smaller. And we can say like this room is like where a bunch of pipes are. And so we'll put a bunch together first. And I'm probably gonna want to piece a bunch so I'll piece these two together piece these two together I know they're not perfectly lined up so bite me <laughs> just, just kidding no no don't bite people that's bad let's not do that <laughs> all right so I'll throw in some pipe work here and what is this this is here I'm gonna go ahead and select all my walls I'm gonna select all of them and I'm gonna group them so now and then I can go ahead and lock my walls. So now I can go ahead and just take all my walls. Oh, wait a minute. And, oh, wait a minute. I didn't really select every single wall, just those ones. Oops. I don't know how that happened. That was bizarre. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> all right. Well, let's go ahead and put these together here first. All right. I'm going to go ahead and twist these, move them here, make sure they go underneath. And from here, you can work with like a palette. You can copy and paste a bunch like this and just keep copying and pasting the pieces that you have. Just like when you're painting, you have a palette and you take your brush and then you put it onto one color and then you put on another color. It's the same thing with stamps, right? You're just gonna take stamps that already exist, copy and paste them. And that's a lot easier than going through the catalog and doing them again. So always remember to do that. I love doing that. It makes it just so much easier. Believe me, it's a pain in the rear when you uh, have to keep adding a whole bunch together each time. Very frustrating. So by just doing this, putting a couple together, putting a couple on the map, and then just copy and pasting chunks is much easier. Much, 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 much easier. Let's put this up against the wall here. Let's put in a couple more. Let's say I'm going to put these two, copy, paste, like this. And so it's, it's easier to kind of do it this way. Let's copy and paste these two. Copy and paste is going to be your best friend, I can tell you right now. And let's put that one up against here like this. And then you can copy and paste them, group, and select them all. And then you can go in and you can drop the brightness even more and drop the layer down even more and drop the size down. And we're going to show like varying different pipe sizes. So you can have some pipe there, copy, paste, maybe, oopsie, not that one, not these ones, my mistake. And I think the layer shadow for these pipes is not, not so great either, so we'll change that. Copy, paste, Let's put another one over right here maybe. In fact, we can just edit it to fit better. So I'll go like this, and then I'll open it up, and I'll put a bunch together like this, copy, paste. Oops, see, there we go. Delete this, delete this, this one, this one. And again, make sure these pipes are just a little bit 
a little bit darker so it kind of represents that it's beneath it that's why you, you want to change that darkness change the darkness of these now they're all set to layer and i don't really want these to be set to layer so i'll probably delete a bunch of these or not delete but i'll end up turning off layer so there's none that's much better well actually it's not too bad i would just make sure to put in some dark underneath but i think that's okay so that's how you go about pipe piping again it's that whole layering thing you know to show the height so stamps that are meant to be on top of something higher up make them a little bit lighter stamps that are below a, another stamp like this you see how i made them darker same thing here when I'm doing this, right? This pipe is higher up. It's also bigger, so it's higher up, closer to the eye. While this pipe is smaller, it's farther down. And the smaller that you make the pipe, the more distance that represents. So if you make the pipe really small like this, it's either gonna represent that it's way down there, or it's just a really small pipe. Okay, so the options are there. We can actually copy and paste this and just put a couple of these together just to make it look more interesting. Put it down a layer, put it down below, and even make it even darker. All right, well, actually, it's pretty dark like that. That looks okay. Copy, paste, copy, paste another one. Put one over here like that. That looks good. Just keep going. Just put a whole bunch together to make it work. That's the beauty of it. Just put a whole bunch of them, and then you have a bunch of cool piping that works out quite well for you. Put another one right there. Oopsie, right there like that. There we go. So now you have some nice pipes, and you can do that everywhere. You can put them all along the edge. You can put them everywhere. It's up to you. That just gives it more of a sewer look to it. Do the, does the pipes have to make sense? No. I mean, this poo is just traveling at weird angles and just flying everywhere. I mean, just crazy. Does it matter? Nah. Don't worry about it. Just let it be a crazy poo sewer. I mean, let it be nuts, okay? Just let it go. <laughs> all right. Let's keep adding in some stuff here. You can even throw in sewer roots. You can put sewer roots underneath things if you want. You know, I, I am here to encourage you to make filthy maps. That's that's just, you know, I don't know, something that I do, okay? I am here to serve, all right? I am here to serve. Let's drop that brightness down, and we'll throw in a couple. There you go. Yeah, yeah. And again, see, you're using that contrast. That pipe stops, kind of pops out a little bit more because you have this dark, uh, stamp underneath it. So always factor that in. Just me personally, I like that quite a bit. And we can change in the texture if we want to. Go in. And I'll show you some fun tricks about shading. Instead of using a black te a black's color, you can just also change the ground texture and make it darker. So if I go in with filters and drop the brightness like this, and watch what happens when I apply it to an edge like this, you'll notice that it is a darker version of, oh, am I using the edgy brush? No, I'm not perfect. Let's just make sure, let me drop the brightness down a little bit more. It's a little bit more noticeable. There we go, we'll apply this here. Uh-oh, is it not, oh, FG, that's the problem. I got the wrong layer. Now you can go in like this. I made it a little bit too dark, by the way. You drop the brightness down too dark. I made a boo-boo there. Bring it down, there we go. Right here should look good. Well, even that's still a little too much. Let's end up dropping the opacity down. That will help. And you can go in and make it look like these sections are a little bit darker without losing the texture that's in the stamp. So if you use black, straight black, uh, you're obviously not going to see the color. So I'll give you an example. So if I use straight black like this, you're going to lose all the information all the texture beneath that, right? Now, there are options to fix that. You can drop the opacity down and you'll still be able to retain some of the texture underneath. But by doing it this way, by changing the brightness of the already ground texture, you won't lose any of the artifacts. You won't lose any of your, um, you won't lose any of the, any of the artifacts or interesting things inside of the texture. So it's always important to try to do that. And you can also use it to show highlights darker sections let's say that you want to sh represent a darker section like maybe this part right here is deeper this this filthy part is deeper you go in right here and just do your single clicks with your darker texture like this let's go a little bit darker in like this and you can kind of use the negative space to make it look like this is a deeper section of water so you can go in make it deeper make it even deeper 
So this is one thing you can do. Now you can also make it brighter if you want things to pop out. You want to show something higher up in elevation instead of lower. So then you would instead boost the brightness up. Okay, and then you're going to make certain sections bigger or uh, higher up. So that represents a little bit deeper. What happens if I want it to make it look like it's higher up? Maybe this section right here is higher up. So you go in with your brighter texture and you just go in like this and you just highlight the sections that you want to be much brighter. Let's just go up to 100%. Actually, and I'll make this whole section right here just much, much brighter like this. These sections are bright. So now you're really having that this weird stuff really start to pop out now because we've just included a little bit more to it. So I can add some here, add some here. And you'll really notice a difference. You'll see this stuff start to pop out a little bit more. And you can make that to represent that this stuff, this green mushy stuff, is higher up, right? It bubbles up. So it's above the regular fill. And you can do it to all these little sections right here like this. Well, anywhere where you see the sewer filth, just go, go over it with a lighter brush just to make it pop out more. Just my suggestion, you can even put some in here like this. Looks kind of nice, making it pop out. I like that, so make that looks nice. Okay, so now you've kind of made those sections pop out. It brings it to life. We're at 213 changes, it's 1136. We have about 20 minutes left in the stream and we're moving right along, so I'm excited. I'm gonna make some saves and we're gonna apply, I'm gonna make a save and I'm gonna apply some filters. And then we can add in some final details and ask some questions. Sweet. All right, yeah, filters are fantastic. Let me tell you a little bit about filters here. Filter tool, there is no shortcut key. So just click this magic wand with the little sparklies around it. Click add new filter. And of course, I'm not gonna use color filters. I'm not gonna use HSBC, though you can if you want. I'm gonna start with uh, texture filter first. All right, uh, well actually, let's go with Corrupted Essence or Gloom because this also gives it some green to it. We'll, we'll play with a couple blend modes because sometimes, or not blend modes, but a couple different filters might work better than others. So there's Doom and Gloom and there's Corrupted Essence. Let me apply Corrupted Essence. And let me turn it off so you can see the difference. Kind of drowns out some of the yellow, but ev that same green kind of pops out. It even adds some really nice brownish kind of colors underneath the piping. The shadowing underneath kind of creates this nice brownish color, which complements among these kind of lighter walls. Uh, but we don't have to go with that. There's other options. Let's try maybe going with Doom and Gloom. Will that, will that one be any better? So now that we've added Doom and Gloom, there's that. Kind of gives it a darker feel to it. Let's turn it off to see the difference. You can see the difference. I actually like the Corrupted Essence better. That's just me personally. But we can go through all of them just to see how they look. Clarity, which is a must use. Uh, if you're making an exterior map, I absolutely recommend placing down your Clarity filter because that's gonna make all the colors pop out and it's really gonna look nice because it kind of already shows that most people, when they're looking at your maps, the ones that have the most contrast, the ones that pop and bright, are really bright, are the ones that are gonna get the most views. So for those of you who are Explore Page aspirants or already on the Explore Page, and you want more people to view your maps on your profile Explore Page, make sure that your maps have a pop. There's some bright, there's some dark, sections that help to make it pop out. That's gonna get you more clicks, more views, more likes. So that's how you draw people into your map is using that clarity filter. It doesn't apply to every map. With interiors, you would expect it to be darker, right? You would expect it to be brighter because you're inside, unless there's a ton of brightness, but there isn't. So we'll go through all the various ones. There's this nice, cool, warm. This is gonna apply like purplish colors. It's gonna add a lot of purple to it. Looks kind of nice, up to you. There's this faded one. There's overcast, which might work well because it is kind of, gives it a sense of a little bit more darkness. You can go with that. There's red sky to give it a reddish tint. There's saturation, sharpness. And we'll go through all the different ones. Winter works okay. But my favorite, of course, is corrupted essence. 
So this is kind of my favorite. You like the overcast best? Which one is it? Overcast? Is it going to be overcast? You like this one better? Yeah, I do. I like that one too. It doesn't bother me. I think it works okay. All right. So overcast is in there. Wow, perfect. Now there are some other things that we can do. Uh, you don't have to paint in your shadows. There's some really nice tricks that you can do to make shadows with stamps. So I'm going to show you that trick right now. So go into that catalog. I'm going to turn off all the packs and I'm going to choose one pack called Watercolor Battle Maps. Okay, we're going to open that up. Now I'm going to show you this really cool trick. Uh, you can do it with light sources too, but I'm going to use clouds because I think it's more fun. So we have this cloud stamp right here. Make sure it's set to layer positive five because we want it to be above everything else. Drop that brightness down and then drop the opacity down just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to apply it to areas that I want to be dark. Okay, so I might apply it right here. And you'll notice right away that it starts to darken an area. And that's really helpful. You can copy and paste, put it down again, and put it right here. You can do it again. Let's put it down here. Or you can just single click, put a bunch in an area, rotate. One right here. We want to add maybe some dark areas right here. Maybe one right here. And so this is a way to add shadowing without having to paint. So you just paint, you just put these right on top like this, and now you have these nice shadows. And it's really, really helpful. I really, really enjoy using this technique because it's really helpful because sometimes you're like, well, wait a minute, where do what do I do? Uh right. The clarity filter can work on darker maps. Up to you. It's not, it's just a general rule of thumb that I could use. You don't always have to take my advice. It's okay. I'm not the only one that makes maps. A lot of really good mappers out there. Tons of them. Just use the technique. There's usually with Incarnate, there's more than one way to do something. And that's something that I really like about Incarnate is that there's not just one way to do things. There's a bunch of different ways. But the objective is just to get the same uh, result. That's the issue. It doesn't really matter which route you get there, though. I definitely recommend a route that's going to be easier than making it harder. A 50-step route to get a result when you can do a three-step route to get to a result, <laughs> it's kind of obvious which way you're going to go, right? So, you know, definitely expand your horizons, figure out how each person does different things, and that will help you. Okay, so now that I've added in shadows, it only makes sense to try to add in some light sources, right? Hey, we got a first time chatter here. Kelowna plays. I never thought about to use those for shadows. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. It's so helpful. And just make sure also that once you put all your clouds down, that's going to be your shadows, make sure you kind of group them. So you just do press that G key. You're going to group them and just label them fog of war or lay them shadows. It's up to you. So that way you know that they're there. And of course, I would lock them as well. So because when you have a giant group, look at the bounding box of this thing. And it's massive, right? So you're you're probably going to accidentally end up selecting it by accident. So make sure that you lock it, label it, and lock it. Now see how I can't, I can no longer uh, touch it. Yeah, that's what you want. You want you don't want to accidentally select it. So lock it. Now that you've added in shadows you can now do the the reverse. You can add in light sources. And I've already added in some light source a little bit by making some areas lighter than uh, in, than others. So this center part, you could probably throw in a light in there. So first we need to pick a source for the light. You don't just put a light stamp down unless there's an overhead light. So that's something that I would recommend. If you want to show a light that's hanging from above, all you have to do is just put a light stamp on the ground. You don't have to worry about showing any kind of light source. Why would you see the, uh, the, the hanging lamp? It doesn't really make any sense. You don't have to do that. So I'll just say that there's a hanging light source right here. And I'm actually going to go to do something else. I'm going to go in to my filters. And I've noticed that my overcast is a layer, the same layer as my light source. So why don't I drop my overcast layer down one? And you'll see that my light source, all of a sudden, it's no longer faded by... And watch what happens if I drop it down a layer again. You see how it fades out? That's because there's a filter on top of it. Bring it up. That's my recommendation, like this. Okay, so now you have like a light source hanging from the ceiling right there. 
You can add in another light source hanging from a ceiling right here. Don't recommend uh, torches. Uh, sewers probably have a lot of methane, so you probably don't want to have a torch. I mean, unless you want to just damn it all to hell, just blow up the whole damn thing. Boom! <laughs> you want to just take your torch down there with you. Just, I don't know. Screw that bard. I don't care about him. I'm lighting up my my dube, my cigarette down here. I don't care. <laughs> so just be careful about that, all right? I will throw in a light source in here as well, probably in this main room, because honestly, I feel like there probably should be. So I'll throw in a light source there. There's a light source there, and it kind of makes sense to throw in maybe a light source in here. This room is nice and big, and so I'll throw in a light source right there. And again, it's just an overhanging light. That's all. So now you have that. So now it looks pretty good to me. Let's change this opacity, make it a little bit brighter. And you can change blend modes, by the way, as you see fit. But that's pretty much that part. We're at 15 minutes. I'm going to save. Oh, yeah. Shadow, I'm telling you, there's just so much that you can do with Incarnate. It's just amazing. I love this tool so much. Of course, I'm biased. I work for them. I'm so biased. <laughs> Can't tell you how, how much fun mapping is. So much fun. Yeah, I mean, and this is what we can do in two hours. So you can do a lot more with a little bit more, more time. I'm going to go over, actually, and just throw in my shadows to line my walls because I just absolutely love putting in my shadow work. And I'm going to throw in this dark texture, black texture, because I just want to. I'm going to go around my edges here, throw in my last bit of details just for fun. I notice that there is just no... Uh, there's just no very little edge here and I really just want to get some dark edge in here excuse me just to give it a little bit more depth awesome just making the right sewer here boom, 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 boom. I always like to do this you don't have to paint you can use object shadows layer shadows uh, you can paint, you can use the path tool. There's so many different ways to go about shadowing. Uh, I, and I know for a fact that I need to do a path tool uh, guide, I think, and the various things. I mean, we call it a path tool, but it does a little more than that. <clears throat> path tool for life. Go ahead and just add in these dark edges that I want because I love adding in ambient occlusion. Because ambient occlusion is what really makes the walls pop out. I just love that. So it really helps. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. That dark contrast is really going to help. That contrast is really going to help to make those walls pop. That's what I'm aiming for. So I'll line these whole edges. Here we go. Yeah, much better. Really gives it that character that I'm looking for. Ambient occlusion. Look at uh. Awesome. I'm really excited about our next stream too, by the way. It's uh, going to be on Friday. It's how to blend the textures. And I, I feel like a lot of people have talked to me and said, I don't understand how to blend textures. And I totally understand that because blending is actually kind of hard. Like, how do I blend this desert region to match with to, uh, up against this uh, snow region or whatever? Obviously, you wouldn't have that. But you know, let's say that you have two different biomes. You have a desert and then a some kind of forest next to it or whatever, or a forest next to uh, a wasteland. Sometimes it's really hard to figure out how to blend those so that there's a nice transition between one biome and another. And that's exactly what I'm going to be helping you with in the next stream. Because trust me, it's really helpful. I do understand that it's very confusing to try to figure out how the fudge monkeys do you do it? Believe me, it is frustrating. I understand. All right. Yeah, now that we've added that nice hard edge there, that's so much nicer. There are so many things that you could do. Add in so much more. There's all these different rooms and space. You can resize the map to make it like this is just one section. You want to go in. You want to resize the map. You can go in and say that this map is actually part of a bigger, bigger hole. So you can go into this resize part right here and continue on the map if you wish okay it's right here under show grid it's in the grid options resize map from a region you can also do it in the hamburger menu right here resize map to region 
okay? And you can extend the map. So it's actually kind of helpful to sometimes just make one section of a dungeon, one section of a sewer. And now that that one section is done, you know what it's going to look like. So expanding it with the resize tool and adding more to it won't be as hard because you know what you're looking for. You know the shadowing, you know the stamps, you know the textures that you're using. So resizing after you make a dungeon to expand it is really helpful. It's so much easier to start with small and then go big instead of starting with large because if you go with start with a huge gigantic map, that's gonna be really off-putting and kind of discouraging because you know that it's a lot of work. But if you start with a small region, so much easier. So definitely keep that in mind when you're making a dungeon, a sewer, or even a city map. You can make a series of blocks and then resize it. That way you already have an idea of what block formations look like, where some of the roads are going to be. So always remember to utilize and take advantage of the resize from region tool to help to your advantage, okay? I'm not going to end up doing that, but it's really easy to do once you've set your, your dimensions, what you want. You can type in ma manually up here in the corner, top right corner, you'll see new scene from region, selected region. It's going to have the top, the left, the width, and the height. And then you just click confirm or confirm button that's by the UI area, and then boom, that's it. It'll just resize it. So that's my suggestion to you. Uh, the last thing that I would recommend is that you can add in... Uh, all the varying details that you want and you want to do less work so go into your textures and just look for alpha alpha textures and alpha texture just means that there is nothing underneath except for whatever is on there I'll give you an example so if I add this texture like this it's only going to show those red those red flowers right there and keep the texture underneath it so that's called an alpha texture and an alpha just means it supports uh, it just supports transparency. Now, if you want to create your own alpha texture, just to let you know, and you want to import it as a custom texture, make sure that file format is a PNG. It supports alpha channel. If you upload a what you hope is a transparent texture and it's a JPEG, then it won't work. Okay, JPEGs do not support transparency. So make sure that if you are making your own custom texture, that it's in a PNG format. Okay, that's my suggestion to you. Now, there are all kinds of other things here. There's a stone alpha here. There's bones here. There's lots of different alphas. There's cracked ground. All of those things are really helpful. Cracked ground is actually one of my favorite textures, and it works really well up against walls. But earlier in the stream, I had mentioned that uh, these walls right here, you'll notice the walls right here, that they're kind of cattywampus like this. They're kind of going in jagged kind of directions like that. Well, if, if, the, if the walls are, if the walls are uh, moving due to plate tectonics all the time, then you would expect some cracks in the ground where the wall meets the ground, right? So let's do that. Let's go in, let's go to cracked ground. I do this a lot, but I use it to line my walls, the interior part of the walls. And what that does is it kind of creates a transition between the wall texture or the texture of the ground, I'm sorry, and the wall stamp. So let's go and just change the size. And then I'm gonna go in, just set it to 100%, should be fine. And I'm gonna go along the edge here, set to FG, and just go in like this. And you're going to see some cracked edges all along here. Just give it a second. And this is a really nice transition between your ground and your wall. So that way it's easier. I, uh, what I mean by transition is just instead of having this dark line here between the texture of your ground and the wall, this broken kind of texture right here will help to kind of give a little bit more character to your ground. It's much easier to paint in all these cracks with just one texture instead of trying to, you know, use the path tool or whatever to show the cracks. So this is really helpful. Definitely always, and I'll actually turn off my softness. Actually, I'm not at 100%. That explains it. There we go. We'll go in. Cracked ground is just, let me tell you something, it just does magic. Really, really helps. I'll apply along this wall here. It's nice, I mean, it just works so, so nice. 
We'll throw in some cracked ground around here and here. Lots of crack going on around here. There we go. Look at all these cracks. What the heck? There we go. Oh, and let's add in some cracks along this edge here too. We want to get in some cracks. Things are just getting crackers in here. Okay, add in here, some here, and I definitely want to put some along this ledge right here. There we go. I guess it's just all that it's cracked up to be. Okay, yeah, I'm done. This looks banana! First time chat! Hey, what up, Gsefa? Awesome, welcome! I'm so glad that you're chatting. Crackheads? Where? Where? <laughs> no, there's no crackheads. That's not what I meant. Okay, maybe, maybe a little bit. <laughs> maybe a little bit, my bad. <laughs> 155 changes. Well, hey, that's it. That pretty much sums it up. There's so many fun things you do. So I'll quickly just... Uh, review the process that we went through mask tool to create your shapes once you've done the mask tool well first thing we did was we made the background black okay now we'll quickly just do a real quick review one second I'll let it load I'm gonna use the path tool to kind of show highlight what we've been doing so first you're gonna make your whole BG and that's this black space right here this is your BG we made the whole BG black because it's the exterior right no one gives a fudge about all the little dirt and and bones and that negative space. No one cares about that stuff unless you want to put like a little scene there or something. But that space is irrelevant, right? So we're not going to worry about that. Is it really? It says first time. Are you really? Well, may I don't know. Oh, first time chat from you. That's what it says. Maybe they're lying. Twitch is lying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then after you've done that, make this whole area... Uh, that then you're going to go in with your add mode of the mask tool and create your basic shape. So we went through like this and we created all the basic shapes, right? With the add mode of the mask tool. And then after we made the basic shapes, we, we ended up making sure to choose a texture to be in the interior, all right, with the add mode of the mask tool. After we did that, then we went ahead and we lined our walls, just like a well, right? Whenever you dig a well, you dig down and then you brick up the walls of the well, right? Because you don't want a dirty, a dirt wall, right? You want, to, you want it to be bricked up, right? So same thing when you're doing your dungeons. You just brick up or wall your edges and you don't have to do that. You can absolutely just use the mask tool to make your make your structures and your rooms. You don't have to line them with walls. I understand that's time consuming. It took us, you know, 20, 30 minutes just to do that. So I totally understand if you're not interested in doing that, you can just use the mask effects to do the work for you to make the walls. So lots of different ways to kind of go about doing it. Now, after you've lined all your walls, then that's when you go in and you start adding in some things like some pipes, things that remind you of a sewer. And then from there, again, we talked about making the interior walls. And as you notice, the interior walls are quite different from the exterior walls. So these walls right here are quite different from these interior walls. So you'll see this interior wall here. It's different from the exterior one. That helps to kind of make it a difference so that you know that there's, uh, you know, this is the walls that are inside and these are the outside walls. And you would expect the walls on the outside to be a bit thicker, a bit wider to hold more weight of the ceiling. But these smaller walls in the center, they can, or inside, they can be a little bit smaller because most of the weight and support is happening by the exterior or outer wall, basically, because that's where a lot of that is being, uh, being held. And you can go in as well. We did a whole bunch of other things too. There could have been more room. This could be bigger. We could have added more interior walls around if we wanted to. So that's basically that. And then of course, uh, one of the cool tricks that I mentioned was the ambient inclusion around the walls. Your light sources, again, when it comes to light sources, make sure that they are on layer five and any filters that might obstruct or diminish the light sources, of, you know, kind of brightness or color, just make sure the light source is at layer four or five and the textures are at layer four. That's below. Okay. And then finally, of course, when you're all done with all that stuff, all the little details, throwing in rubble, dirt, 
throwing in your cracked ground, throw in some biological stuff. So throw in your fungus, your sewer roots, just because it looks better when you mix between the, you know, the structure, inanimate objects between, and then adding in maybe some biology, some plants and things like that. It gives it a more, it just looks better when you apply both uh, shrubbery plants with man-made structures and stuff like that. It just looks better when you add the two together. Are there any final questions before we call it good? Because I am going to be taking my lunch right after this. I hope that everything worked out okay. Feel free. Ask me annoying questions. I love annoying questions. Just how do I do it? How do I do it? How do I do it? How do, how do, how do, how do I do it? Yeah, feel free to ask any questions. If you guys like this map, I can also make sure to make sure that it's available to clone and edit. I'll make sure to put it on my profile. I'll also put the link to the map in the description when we add it to YouTube. For those of you who maybe just walked in and didn't see it all, feel free to just uh, feel free to just uh, watch it on YouTube. I usually upload it right after the stream, or it's uploading during my lunch, so you'll be able to see it then. So go check that out. It doesn't seem like there's any questions. Dragon dreams and squirrels, you are awesome. You are awesome. You are all awesome. No, 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 no. Just dragons and dreams is, and squirrel is, is, is awesome. The rest of you are just so-so, I guess. No, I'm just kidding. You're all awesome. <laughs> ah, it's fun to be a jerk. <laughs> I love your sewer. Delicious filth. <laughs> Yuck. Hey, great stream, everybody. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Philip, for modding. Great job. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Hey, and don't forget... On Friday, we're going to be blending textures, okay? So go check that out. Thanks for getting yourself all filthy with me in this awesome stream. Always glad to get down and dirty with our users. All right. Thank you, everybody. Please stay safe and healthy. And I will see you all on Friday, hopefully. Great work, everyone.